Peter, thank you very much. Let's return to my conversation with Intermarket Strategy CEO and founder, Ashraf Lali. Ashraf, very patient man. You've done the side of the story. Where are we in the big market story in the S&P, in the U.S. equities? A couple of big thinkers are talking about their position. BlackRock exclusive today. George Soros changing his mind. What, what do you think? Yes, George Soros uh, reducing his holdings in U.S. stocks and putting more in gold. Uh, but the stories we, we're looking here, maybe I'll ask you the question, what, what day are we today? Well, today, I need to look at my out. We've got yeah. a wonderful calendar uh, uh, which tracks my every move. It is the 17th of May. Right. And we are very close to the 21st of May. We cannot put our hats on for the one-year anniversary because it's going to be a weekend. But it's the one-year anniversary of the all-time high in the S&P right. 500. So we've been 12 months without a market high, and this is the longest period since the five-year and five-month period mm -hmm. between October 2007 and March 2013. Um, around 2013, when we did hit the high, the Federal Reserve was in, uh, had just started QE3. Right now, the Federal Reserve is not in the middle of any QE. It's trying to convince the world that it's going to do more rate hike. Um, many attempts trying to take the high and we failed. Uh, Intermarket strategy, we look at the relations between the market. Mm -hmm. One of the correlations that is still holding is yields continue to fall, yep. dollar yen continue to fall. That maybe needs a program by itself why so it to continues to go down. Yen? No, we, uh, at 120 we did say we're going to go towards 106. I think we're going to stay at around, we, we're probably going to go back towards 104. Why is that? The JGBs, the reason that the BOJ cannot buy, cannot do more QE, is because there are not enough JGBs out there. The main reason that the yen went down, that dollar yen went from 80 to 1, to 118 was not just because they were buying more QE. It's because they convinced the pension fund, the world's largest pension fund, to switch from bonds to equities. Mm -hmm. When they switched to equities, a lot of the pensions sold those bonds. So there are not enough bonds out there to be bought by the BOJ. So the BOJ, all it can do is buy more equities, ETFs. The bottom line, dollar yen is more of a sell story, selling the highs, and yields continue to go down. Um, Maybe, you know, some people say the Japanese are still investing abroad. Why is the yen going up? Because they continue to hedge against yen weakness. You also mentioned U.S. Treasury yields. I covered this yesterday. We surveyed 66 um, participants in the bond market, and the range, the range of views was like 3.8% on the upside, 1.6% on the downside. Mm -hmm. The gap. The gap between them ha hasn't been as wide for a number of years. There's a great division in what happens next from the Fed. I've got my work function, WIRP, uh, up here on the terminal. 4% probability of June, 19% probability uh, in, in, in uh, July. I can get my words out. We will get there. Um, and I look at Christmas. It's, it's 56%. Right. Um, the Fed, can they move in an election in November? Is, is, is the window, what's the window for the Fed? To move twice. I think it's unlikely they're going to do June. Uh, some people said one of the reasons is the Brexit uncertainty. I probably find it unlikely for Janet Yellen to find enough evidence of further decline in the unemployment rate and further increase in the CPI for her to move in. Okay? Uh, what I'm quite concerned is that the job market is the last one to know. I think we are kissing goodbye the days of plus 300,000 NFP. Kissing goodbye to 300,000. Ashraf, great to have you uh, with us. Uh, next time you're in time, make sure you pop in and see us. That is uh, Ashraf Ladi, CEO and founder of Intermarket Strategy.